All right, let's see what happens. So I sort of started it, but I didn't really say it for him. Let's see, you guys can help me out. All right, here we go. Uh, block, okay. So I've got that here. I'll try to switch back and forth. Uh, is everybody okay that has a calculator today? Did you sort well? Did that go okay? Yes. All right, good. Uh, and then just make sure what's really nice is I, I, I normally try to tell you how many total data points there are, so it's really easy for you to tell if you missed one. So just make sure that the last, the blank spot would be 31 in this case. Does that make sense? Because then that means you have 30 data points actually in there. Just make sure you get all the data in. Because it sucks to do a whole problem without all the data. So thank God you have somebody who gets partial credit. Um, so here it would be, uh, what was it? I forgot already. 72? Minus 57. Minus 57 over 5, because I want you to use 5 classes. Oh, crap. That's right. Every time I go there, it bleaches out. All right. Holy crap, so we head way up there. All right, let's see. There we go, that's good. Uh, so that'll be 15 over 5, which comes out to be 3. So you should know if it comes out even, or if it comes out uh, round, uh, 3, instead of 3 point something, that almost sucks a little bit. you got to remember to suck that last data point in. If it came out to be 3.3, .3, what would I make by width? 4. If you round down, are you going to cover all your data? No. The most important thing is to cover it. If you over cover it, that's fine. All your data points have to have a home. Can I understand? So if you make things, if you round down at all, you're going to leave these guys out. All right, maybe, maybe. So no matter what, you round up. Unless it's a whole number, then you just suck the last data point into the last class. Uh, so let's see. So how do we set these classes up? If you really, really want to, you can do it the way the book does it. <coughs> Somebody's trying that and they're realizing the inherent troubles with that. Um, so if you do this, you start normally you start with the, the lowest data point. So 57 up to what? 60. 60. So 60 is not included in there. That's what this less than symbol means, of course, right? So then you go 60 up to. That's crazy. So we know that the width is three. So you can just do this, really, right? Just go by threes, and then go by threes. Come on, X. And then we make that last one less than or equal to, so we can suck that 72 in. Yeah, we do that. That doesn't happen all the time. Uh, but unfortunately, it just sort of, it, this randomly happened. This is what you guys gave me as data, and it just happened to happen this way again. But it doesn't happen often that you have to do that. Now, now, the frequency is not 60 minus 57 is 3, because then everything in the world would be this. Right? Here's the distribution of heights. Everybody's saying, no. The frequency is how frequently you saw a data point show up in that class. <coughs> so what data point? So if we go back here, from 57, not including 60, to come there. OK. Uh, how many data points are there? One, two, three. So that's an unfortunate coincidence. So I'm gonna write. You're not gonna see me write it, but I just wrote a three there. It's crazy. And now from 60 up to not including 63, five. it would be, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Oh shit! So five. I like it. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. You're counting because the the height of the bar should tell you how many people or whatever it is you're counting were in there. So that's what the frequency is, is the number of data points. In this case, they represent people's heights that actually fell in that class. It isn't whatever how wide it is, because then everything in the world would be this. No. Uh, so let me click back over. You guys can help me out. So here I got five. Yeah. And then here, what would you guys get for this? Three. Good. Some of you guys got 12, which is not good. At the end, what should this add up to be? 30. That's a quick check you can do for yourself. So what do you guys get for 66 to 69? 6. And then 69, 72? 30. So if you add these up, 9, 22, 30. Thank God. Right? Just add them up. Make sure they add up to 30. If they don't, you've got to go find the data point you missed. Right? If you're running out of time, just do the whole problem and say, I know I missed one, but I didn't have time, and I'll give you most of the credit. If you just show me, you know what to do. Right? 
what is my point here? My point is not to ding you for making a very easy human mistake. My point is to grade you on understanding how stats works, right? So don't redo a whole problem and you're running out of time. You know, no, just go ahead and do it. You say, I couldn't see what one I missed. You know, not a big deal. Um, now, if you're missing like 10 of them, that's bad. Something, uh, not to pick on any, I'm not, but be careful about, you've got to include the repeats. Of course you do. Because the repeats would be where most people are, and that should show up in your end result. It should say, there's a lot of people here. If you don't count the repeats, then it's going to make it look like the, the most people are somewhere else. And that's not right. All right. Relative frequency, another name for percentage. So how many data points total are there? 30. 30. So out of 30, how many showed up in this class? Three, which is? 10%. percent Crazy. Five out of 30. 16.7%. Good, 16.7%. That's fine. Or 17. We're going to do this by hand, so I don't think you can get the difference between 16.7 and 17. 13 out of 30? 43.3? 6 out of 30? 20. Good. And then three out of thirty again, ten, and then you add up to be roughly one hundred percent, right? Or in this case, exactly one hundred percent. All right, how are we doing so far? Depending on how you're rounding. Good so far. Now, what I love about this, I didn't even check this before class, and I didn't make these numbers up. Every woman in here that did the survey, you can see your number in there, right? Everybody who did the survey, you yes. see your number. I can't remember, I might have rounded, somebody said 63.5 or something. I just wanted them to be whole numbers. You with me? I think one person put in a decimal number. but uh, And I love the people that said 5.4. 5.4 inches tall. Oh, hey. You can sit right here. No. You and the 90 inch tall person, I want you together. Just sit on her shoulder. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Uh, all right. So is everybody decent with how to set up a frequency? This is a relative frequency table, right? Which means show the frequency and the percentages. Yes, you're, that's fine. And in the book, I think they do use just decimals. So you do this, 0 0.10, 0 0.167. That's fine. Uh, just percentages make more sense to humans, that's why we invented them. It's just easier to think about if it's a percentage. If you say 0.0218, uh, if you say 2.18%, now I, I kind of get a better feel for that, right? I'll maybe go ahead and turn that. Can somebody, way in the back? Yeah, which one? Yeah, good, thank you. That's a little better, right? Uh, okay, I'll just, I'll just assume it's better. Um, so what kind of scale? Now be careful, I said frequency histogram. So what numbers are you gonna use? Yeah, I'm not going to take a crazy amount of points off if you do the percentage, you know, but I just want to make sure you got to read the instructions so you know you're using the right thing. So here I want you to use these numbers, right? Frequency. That's the frequency. So what scale did somebody use? Twos. Twos? Threes? I'm going to do threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Cool. I like it. So try to use a scale that uses... Don't go to like 50 here, that'd be crazy. Because then all your, your picture's down here, and then there's just all this empty space. Use the space you gave yourself, right? Pull it out so it makes better resolution of what's going on. Uh, and then what am I getting? My scale is already set up for this axis. 57, 60, 63. I go by threes. 57, 60, 63, 66, 69, 72. What's the label of this one? Frequency. Frequency. And what's the label of this one? Heights. Heights of female students inches. Yes, sir. Will you be marking this down on like for the um, x-axis that you have to put? Uh, in another math class I had, like, you had to put a big line and a little line, and then you put 57, like, to show the break of numbers, because you're going from oh. 0 to 57. It's always assumed that there's going to be a break. Officially, this is like a little heartbeat symbol you use yeah. for a break, but these all, almost never start at zero, so it's always understood that we're skipping until there's something to see. So it's not lying. 
Now, if you don't start the, the vertical scale at zero, that's line. Because then your differences in heights don't mean what they're supposed to mean. But I'm just skipping all the empty space until there's freaking data. So it's just kind of known that that happens. If you want to put the little heartbeat symbol that means break, you can. But it, it's just known. We don't even put it there. It's just known that that happens. I like it. Cool. So then how tall is this first bar? Three. three. Yeah, because there's three frequencies. So it goes up to three. Pop. And then 60 to 63 goes up to five. Hopefully you guys make some that aren't so... Wobbly, my poor little, <laughs> they're kind of wobbly. Uh, and then this one goes up to 13, just barely above 12. And then six, right there, and then three again. So what's beautiful about this, let me know what shape, it looks like the histogram is, is giving us the finger. <laughs> right, sorry. Uh, but that's gonna happen, anybody know what shape this is? Bell curve. It's a normal. It's called a normal curve, right? Uh, and it's kind of called normal because this is what happens normally. Heights. I would expect there to be most people close to the average height, and then less and less people as you get farther away. That's a normal curve. A big peak in the middle, and then it drops off about the same amount on each side. Nice and symmetric. This is more normal than I could have hoped for. I love it. And, and with a relatively small sample size, it could look almost any way, but it should look roughly symmetric normally. Unless somebody lied, you know? Like the 90 inch person. I'm sorry, I keep picking on the 90 inch person. I just can't get over that. Um, literally, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you guys, so, so it does look, if I drew in like a bell curve, like a shape of a bell, it would fit on it really nicely, right? Maybe it drops away a little too drastically, but that's really beautifully normal. And I didn't do the dudes. I'm very curious what the dudes would look like. But if I if I graph the males' heights, uh, there's a slightly smaller sample of men, so I don't know if it come out just as normal. But anyway, on the test, I'll give you some data that relates to you somehow. Maybe quiz one grades. I do that sometimes. And uh, you've heard of uh, you've heard of teachers curbing grades, right? So all that means is sometimes what it means in one sense is you could if the if the lowest grade is a 20 and the highest grade is a 60. You basically just pick that up and just put it on top of uh, the normal A, B, C, D. So then the 60 person gets an A and then everybody else just falls where they fall. Does that sort of make sense? When I curve grades, I sort of do, not only do I pick it up and lift it, I also give more points to the people that lost more points because the reason that a teacher curves is they feel that they <coughs> might have taken, been too harsh. So of course, if you make a mistake, the more mistakes you made, the more places I was harsh, so the more points you should get back. So I sort of give you a progressive curve, I guess I'd say, right? If I have to curve, we'll see. Don't make me curve, right? Okay, how are we doing? Okay, okay. All right, so that's what I'm going to ask you, and normally I ask you it in parts, uh, you know, like just like this, basically, pretty much exactly like this. I'm going to ask you, except I won't say this. I'll say find the class width, set up a relative frequency, and then create a histogram. I'll say those parts, right? I like it. Okay, so uh, while this data is still in some of you guys' calculators, I want to show you something else right now. <coughs> Neither. And, and uh, I might be showing this to you too early, but screw it. You, you, you always have to show me work, always. So if you've taken stats before and your old teacher lets you push buttons and then write the number down, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you do that shit. But I will show you how to check your work, right? Uh, and just to let you know, we're going to get into standard deviations in, in the next class. Anybody know what standard deviation is already? Yes? So so what is it? It's like... It's kind of like how you, you can determine an outlier based on how many standard deviations are like away from the... So A standard deviation is an average distance from the middle. So it tells you, if I give you that number, it tells you how spread out the data is. So normally for quizzes, the standard deviation in quiz grades and test grades are normally around 12. So the average distance from the average to a data point is like 12, right? You guys kind of get the feel. So it's a number that represents how spread out. The bigger the number is, the more spread out your data is, right? Um, so we're going to do that by hand, 
until this first test, and then I'll never make you do make you do it by hand because the calculator actually just spits it out of this. After this first test, getting the standard deviation is going to be the first step, and then we got to do all this other work. So I'm not going to make you go through all the steps of calculating it by hand after the first test. But on the homework and the first test, you better do all the freaking work, or I'm going to make you do it again, right? Okay. Uh, so let me just show you this. So for those of you that still have the data in there, if you hit stat calc, that sounds promising. I want to calculate something with, so hit the over arrow to go to calc. And how many variables did we plug in? <coughs> we didn't use 30 variables. One variable with 30 values. So it's one variable statistics I want to do. Do you see that? Cool. And when we're trying to do like correlation between number of beers you drank the night before in test grade in a 7 a.m. class. That's two variable stats, and then we're going to use two variable statistics, right? Which is an actual, well, not an actual, but I made up some data that goes on. Uh, so if you hit enter, it's, it looks very, it's like, all right. It defaults to list one. So if you just hit enter, it's going to calculate stuff with list one. And none of this makes any sense to you at the moment. Right? But I just want to show you this is here. The very first thing I might as well just tell you, x with a bar on it means the average x. If there were two variables, it would use x and y. So it would be an x bar and a y bar for the different lists. Right? So x bar, that would be the average height for the women who fill out the survey, 64.16 inches. You with me? And the average for the men was 69.2, or I, I did calculate that. And that's almost exactly the average height of men in general, which is kind of nifty. Right. Anyway, is everybody still sorted with me? So this doesn't make any sense to you, which is fine. Right. Here's the standard deviation number. So this is the average distance from the, from the 64 to a to a, any woman, any woman's height. That's the average distance away. So it's it's decently tight. We saw that from the picture we made. It wasn't very far ranging. It was kind of tight in there, right? So I knew the standard deviation wasn't going to be big. If I made a standard deviation, it was a, a histogram that went from way down here, way over to there, then the standard deviation is going to be like 20 or something. It's going to be big, spread out really far. Okay, I like it. Whew. Okay. Let me think. I think that's all I want to show you for now. Well, if you scroll down, you see some more stuff. More stuff that doesn't make any damn sense except min and max. All right, so we'll talk more about that, actually, when we hit stuff like that. All right. How are you doing? Are you still going? Yes. So what I want to do now is get a little bit into the next, at least one more section. <coughs> so what we just did was related to section 2.2. We're going to try to actually do 2.3 and 2.4. Let's see what happens. I think that'll be pretty good. We might throw in a little 2.5. Oh, yeah. There's no clock in here, right? I remember that. All right. It's like all of you guys and me, we need the clock soon. All right. Can you turn the light back on? Thank taken the SAT test. Anybody taken the SAT? How were your scores given to you? Do you remember? And you're like, I immediately forgot the minute I got it. Yeah. How we received them or like how they No, no, no. You, the score, what, what did it say? Was it a grade, like a normal grade or what was it? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what am I trying to say? Did, did they give you any percentiles? No, just like no, shoot. All right. They used to. All right. I, I'm sorry. I'm going based off of my experience, which is, what, 20 years ago? Holy shit. More than that. Um, sorry. So, so let's do this. 
Uh, what we're getting into right now is uh, what we just came out of is how to visually represent data. So now we're finally going to get into some uh, how do you analyze data. So when we represent data, we're not analyzing it. We're just putting it into a picture so people can see what's going on. Now we want to computationally analyze some data. So one of the first things you can do is calculate what's known as percentiles. And this leads to the box plots that somebody had a question about earlier. Um, so if, if, if I am in the 60th percentile, let's say, what do you think that means? I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever heard the word percentile before, so this could be a very, like, I don't have a freaking clue what that means, Jeff. Yes, ma'am? Does that mean you're in, like, the top 20 percent? Yeah, I like it. So. If you're in the 60th percentile, how many people did better than you? 40% did better than you. How many people did worse than you? 60%. So it's not quite the same as getting a 60 on a test. Because if you get a 60 on the test, that could be the highest grade. So you're in, like in the, you're in the, well, the 0th percentile then. Right? Or the 100th percentile, actually. I'm thinking of the wrong way. Because right? 100% of people did worse than you in that case. You guys kind of with me? So that's what I was saying. They used to give percentiles on SAT reports because what happens to the SAT every time it's given, it's a different test. And maybe one year they make it easier than the next year just kind of randomly. So to make it fair, they give you a grade that is relative to everybody else. So if one year you get uh, uh, <coughs> 1,700 on the SAT, but there were 100 people that got higher than that, then that must have been kind of an easy test and your percentile would be low. But what if you get 1,700 the next year and that is the highest grade? It would be evil just to say, well, they both got 1,700. You got it with me? Which is why they really should do percentile. I'm surprised they don't do it anymore. Do you guys understand the inherent, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, the help mean, <laughs> the inherent, uh, uh, screw it, what's the word? How that's not fair. There it is. The inherent unfairness of that, right? You guys kind of understand. Okay. Um, so 60%. Let me let me make up some data. Let's play with some real data here, or, or you know, made up data, but some real numbers. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, Jeff. So. Uh, more than likely, you'll be wrong, but don't worry. This is a great time to be wrong when I'm not grading you. Which, what number do you think would be the 60th percentile? Say again, sorry. 27. So I have some people saying 27, right? 25. Some people saying 25? Now, the 27 people, or the people saying 27, why do you say 27? Anybody want to say, tell me why? 60% yeah, because how many numbers are below 27? Six out of 10 is 60%. Now, the 25 people, hopefully you didn't just count wrong, but there's a valid reason why you might say 25, because how, many, how much is supposed to be above the 60th percentile? 40%. And sure enough, there's one, two, there's 40%. There's four out of 10. You guys with me? So neither one of those is the right answer then, because they don't both do what they're supposed to do. They only do one of it. So what's the right answer then? Which number? It doesn't have to be. I didn't say which data point, if you realize. I said, what number is the 60%? 26. How many data points are about 26? Four. Four. How many data points are about 26? Six, right? So it's 40% above, and there is 60% below. I like it. Let's see if it's like a problem. Is there ever like a number where it's like 25, 26, and it tells you, or? Do it again, sorry. When it's like, well, let's say, is there ever like a time where it's 25, 26, and it's asking for the 60th percentile? Would you do halves then? Totally. This is what we're building up to. Mm -hmm. So I'm building up to why it makes sense how we calculate a percentile. We're getting there. You're exactly right. We're not there yet. We haven't done anything as far as related to what they're going to ask you to do. We just analyzed what it means to be a percentile. We're getting closer to how the hell do you calculate a percentile. Um, so obviously, if I just do 60% of 10, and, and one real quick, do you notice something? What, what is it about the data that I put down that won't always be true? This data is in order. 
And obviously it's got to be in order for this to make sense. You wouldn't just say four, nine, seven, and then the last one is like zero. And now, I'm in the zero, I'm the hundred percent of you. No, I'm sorry, dude. They just didn't put it in order. Sit down, right? <laughs> so why does it make some sense to start here? Because if I want to find a number that has 60% below it, I'm going to go 60% of the way in. Doesn't that make some sense? Right? If you've got 10 people standing in a row, which person has 60%? I'm going to go 60% of the way in to this group of people, right? All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So what's 60% of 10? Where 10 come from? The total number of numbers. So it's not always 10. As a student, I know you're like, you're trying to figure out what is it, how do you do this problem? 10 is the number of numbers, right? Here there's 10 numbers. 60% uh, of 10 is? Six, but was six the right, the sixth number, was it the right number? One, two, three, four, five, six, was that the right answer? No, it wasn't, shit, right. Because again, so, so here's how percentiles work. You always take the percentage you want of how long your list is. That's step number one. This is a two-step process always. If it comes out to a whole number, I'm sorry, that's six, you average that one with the next one. Isn't that exactly what we did? If it came out to uh, anything else, to a decimal at all, you would round it up and take that number. That's how it works. That's just how it works. Uh, the smaller your list of data, the less sense it's gonna make. And I'll show you a couple examples. This is a very small set of data, right? How many things could be the 41st percentile versus the 42nd percentile? They're going to be the same damn number because there's only so many freaking numbers, right? Does that make sense? So a lot of this only makes sense when you have a really large set of data. Uh, but this is okay. 60% is 6. So I came out to a whole number, so I averaged that with the 7th. And then the second step is do that. <laughs> What's the 6th number? 25. What's the 7th number? 27, average those, you get 26. So that is the 60th percentile. Let me stop there for a second. Yes, ma'am. So if you had like a 25 <coughs> would you still do the same thing? Totally, yes. Okay. If I had a 25 and a 417 million, <laughs> still, I would average those. I like it. Whatever those are in those positions. So notice how a percentile doesn't care what the numbers are, it just cares where the numbers are. After you put them on. Exactly, exactly. I like it. So that's why this is a, uh, I like the title is Measures of the Location of the Data. That's the title of this section. So it doesn't care what the data numbers are, except that it gotta be in order, it just cares <laughs> where they fall. I like it. So, so, uh, the 50th percentile, let's just do this real quick because it's got a special name. How would you do the 50th percentile? What would you do? And, and I'm sorry, let me use the correct symbol so you guys can used to it. This means the 50th percentile. P sub 50 is known as the, is a, is a way to symbolize the 50th percentile. A way to represent that. Fiftieth percentile. So how do you calculate that? What do you for this data? Step one. I'm sorry. Let me make this part B. <laughs> What's step one? Take fifty percent of ten. Go that far in. Fifty percent of ten is five. Five. It's crazy. Is that a whole number? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So then you're going to do what? Average that one with the next one. So what's the fifth number? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to average that with 25. 22, I like it. So the second step is you average 19 and 25. Get 22. So 22 is the 50th percentile. Another name for that <clears throat> is the median. Because what's the median in a road? Where is it? In the middle. And... 22 is dead center, isn't it? 22 is right in the middle. It's got half below and half above. So, is that the same thing as the what we mean when we say the word average? Is that the same thing? 
the median doesn't care at all. If, if I did this, made this number into that, would the median change? Would the average change? Yeah. Hell yes. So, let me make that back to what it was, sir. In the newspaper, or newspapers still exist, I don't know if you guys know that, uh, uh, online, or uh, uh, on TV, or anywhere the hell you get any kind of news, very often they'll talk about like home prices in San Diego. Uh, so it would be unfair to use an average to describe home prices in San Diego. Why would that be unfair? Pretty much I gave it away with what I just did up there. Because one area may have really high low uh, cost houses while the other one Exactly. Go to La Jolla. I go to La Jolla just to walk around and go, I'll never live there. <laughs> I might get invited there, maybe. Like, clean up a little bit. Um, or I go, man, they, they should really leave a little room somewhere for people to get out there and look at the view, but they don't. They build houses every day. I'm like, you, just, you don't own that. <laughs> Poor little Jeff. Um, so, so we use medians for home prices. What if somebody came to work somewhere and they said, what could I expect to make here if I start working here? What can I expect to make? And let's say you had... Uh, four people working at this place. You had somebody making forty thousand, somebody making fifty thousand, somebody makes fifty-two thousand, and then you got the CEO, right? So you tell them, you, you calculate the average, and you tell them that number. What, what's the average? Somebody, can you calculate the average real quick? You should all know how to calculate the average, right? We're going to use the word mean instead of the word average, and the symbol we know already is x bar for sample mean. Do it again. 